In this video, we're going to focus on how we can make our data a bit more random and then also expand the data with more data points. As you do this, you might notice that you might get an error. And the reason why this is, is because there are multiple boxes that we still need to cover based on the formulas we did that might counteract with each other. So let's start to look how we can solve some of the bugs here. So the next part here, and this is part 11, we're going to focus on debugging or switching our item. And then you will see we get some errors and now we have to debug. And this debugging requires probably two items that we need to solve. And I will solve here the first item. So we have this code here, but this code here and all the values and data points are quite static. And I saw some comments as well. If you have multiple data points, it gives an error. All right, the reason why it gives the error is because we have a structure based on multiple items and uh, we have like hard-coded color conditions. So let's start to work on that. So if I was going to scroll down here now, we're going to convert this here into a proper data. So I'm going to make here a loop and this loop will consist now of 25 data points instead of only seven hard-coded data points. So what I'm going to say here is constant and then we say here dates and then Within here, I'm going to say constant numbers as well. So we have two constants, one for dates and one for numbers. There's this one here and that one here. Because normally we should supposed to have here now the bars, but this will not work because we have multiple items we need to solve first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add up here this. I'm going to make a for loop. Set four, then let i equals zero. And then what I will do here is we will loop i as long as i is smaller than 25. And then we say here yeah, i plus plus for increment. Increase it incrementally with one value. So the next thing what I want to do here is to make sure that it is a date. So basically this here, we have to put it in and then I want to plus one every single date. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to create here a constant. I'll say here this is the date equals new date, which is basically a new date object based on today, which is the current date. And then next, what I want to say here that is I want to grab this date. Then what I want to do is I want to say a dot set date. And basically what I'm doing is I want to have one day incremental every single time based on the I. So I say here, the date, we're going to grab this and say dot get date. And then we're going to say here plus I. So what this truly does is we're going to grab the date and then we're going to, or we're going to set a new date here basically, but the new date is based on the current date that we get, which would be whatever that date is and then plus one day. And this will be very nice because once we do that, it starts to work nicely. So then what I want to do here is I want to say here, I'm going to grab this array here, dates.push. And we can do it like that. And the same thing what I want to do with numbers, dot push and then maybe here for the numbers dot push I don't want to put in the uh, I open uh, and before I even continue on here I need to make sure that this will push on the date which makes sense because I want to push the date in here and then here for the numbers if I do I we start at zero so I don't want that and we have a stock market value so it should be always summary things so what I'm going to do here very simple math dot random and I just do it simple by saying multiply by 10 for example so it will be a random number somewhere between 0 and 10. So if I save this, and then now we're going to put here console log, and then we're just going to log out the dates. And then I want to do as well, log out our numbers. Save that, refresh. So now if I open up developer tab, you can see here we should get a huge amount of items here. All the dates, beautiful. And we get all of the numbers here. You can see the numbers are ranging somewhere from zero all the way up to 10, basically. And if you click here, you can see here very carefully, we have the dates here, but the dates are based on what, what time it is right now. So I don't want that. I want to set this on 000, because if you don't do this, we will get an error afterwards. Let me show you. Let's copy this. This label here will be common out. I'm going to say here, labels, dates, comma. Then we're going to say here, for the data, let's say data column. Then we're going to grab here the numbers as the value and comma. If I save this, refresh, there we are. All right, it starts to work nicely. 
and but you can see here one thing and that's what we want to solve first well as we do this well wait there are two items here already you can see here the uh, interpolation is now not working accordingly so we need to solve that but secondly the background color here for the green is also not working so how do we solve that well let's scroll down here you can see here this target fill that needs to be dynamic and the reason why it needs to be now the numbers basically here but index zero because that's the opening time so let's grab this and put it in there now say here index zero let's save that refresh all right so we have that but still now the colors are slightly better so that's good the next thing what i need to do here is the following I need to uh, adjust this one, I guess, and we need to adjust this here. So let's fix this because as I said, or as I mentioned earlier, the starting time is a bit off. It just grabs down the date of now, what is right now the current time, which would be 10, 10 a.m., uh, 10 40 a.m. So I want to set the date on midnight, basically. So I'm gonna say here, get date, and here we have the date push, and there's a dot, set hours, and then I'm going to say 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. Save that. Refresh. All right. So as you can see here now, this works better. And as we hover over it, this will work nicely. So if I refresh this, what I want to do here now is solve this tiny issue here. So we need to solve that. Uh, let's see. What is that? That's the label. Most likely we need to do a... Uh, uh, for the decimals. We have to remove the amount of decimals in here. So... That is for the Y label. Let's search for that Y label. Here we are. And in the Y label here, we get this Y label and then two fix of this. But for some reason, the Y label is not two fix. Uh, let's see here. Is that the fill text? Let's scroll down here. Uh, let me double check. Hold on. So, all right. Sorry. It is not the Y label. I thought it was the Y label. So let me just uh, explain. So why I was thinking about Y label because I think about the Y axis here. However, this here was not the Y label because it's not on the crosshair. The crosshair Y label is this one here, the 7.40, for example. But what we need is this one here. This is probably starting point here. Apparently, I can name that the starting point. So we're going to search for the starting point. I guess we can say uh, uh, Control F and then say starting point. There we are. So the constant of starting point is that, and then we're going to look for the text. We have here the fill rec starting point, and then we have here the fill, well, this is the starting point text. So this is the constant that we're referring to here. So what I'm going to do here is just say here, dot, and I'm going to say to fix. And I'm going to say here, two decimals. Save that, refresh, there we are. So now, this all works very, very good. However, we're not really done here, and the reason why we're not done yet is it becomes a problem the moment we have more value. So let me show you here, and that will be in the next video. We're going to focus on that one. If I do 100 here and I save for refresh, you will see here now our crosshair is starting to give us another issue here, which is the add color stop. That's the one we're going to solve in the next video.